Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the first Monday review of the Skybet League One season. Looking back at Saturday's one-all home draw with Michael Appleton's Imps Lincoln City. Going to start doing a slightly different format with the Monday reviews this season just to sort of freshen it up. So we're going to do match overview. We're then going to look at the best Lincoln player on show throughout the 90 minutes. Gillingham's match ratings from my point of view. And then the Jules man of the match to finish up. So, without further ado, let's crack straight on and have a look at the match as a whole. Personally think that the Jill started the game really well. Open exchanges, we were, we were on the front foot, we were pressing, we were doing everything correctly, we were playing the game in the right areas. We didn't really create anything clear cut. And then unfortunately we got hit by a sucker punch, didn't we? Uh, Lincoln got a bit of an overload down there, left hand side. Reese Bennett, who's filling in as a fullback at the moment in the absence of both Ryan Jackson and Robbie McKenzie, are out injured. Um, got caught ball watching, was slightly out of position. Plenty of space down his outside. The ball got fizzed across the box to Anthony Scully, I think it was, who hit the ball first time. Jamie Cumming reacts brilliantly, makes a really good save on the line, tracking backwards with his left arm. David Tatonda tries to clear it with the outside of his boot, back out to their left-hand side. But unfortunately, it gets recycled into a dangerous area. And Tao Eden was on hand to smash it into the roof of the net via coming. And, it, and uh, Lincoln led, um, probably slightly against the runner play for me, um, if you can have against the runner play in the first two or three minutes in a game. But um, unfortunately, in the aftermath of that goal, there was a slightly unsavoury incident. Um, there's a lot going around on social media at the moment. Facebook and Twitter are awash. I'm sure everybody knows what we're talking about. For me, there's two things that are very wrong with the incident. Um, and that's the fact that there probably shouldn't be a gap in the hoardings uh, between the Rainham end and the Medway stand. But the Lincoln player should not be running into a fan area. Um, if a fan is to run onto a pitch, onto a field of play and celebrate a goal, chances are they're being ejected. Now, I'm not saying that Lincoln players can be ejected from the stadium, but... They certainly shouldn't cross that line and go into that fan area. Um, but that is where I'm going to leave it in terms of the incident. That is my opinion on it at the moment. There's plenty of accusations and videos and all sorts going around on social media, like I've already said. Um, but I think it's a case of, of keeping quiet and um, letting the authorities um, complete their investigation. And then I'm sure both um, clubs and uh, the police will release statements in due course. Sad, sad sideshow, unfortunately, to what was a very good game and what should have been a celebration for both sets of fans on the return to competitive um, games in stadiums for the first time in 18 months. But back to the football, because that's what we're all here for. I thought the Jules reacted initially quite slowly after conceding. We weren't getting to grips with the game. I don't think we were getting to grips with our own system. It looked like Steve Evans had set it up in a diamond with Daniel Phillips at the base, Carl Dempsey from the right, Stuart O'Keefe from the left and Oliver Lee at the, um, at the point. But I just think Stuart O'Keefe was the wrong side. He's naturally left, uh, right footed, so he kept tucking inside. He kept um, coming back into traffic um, and we were very congested. We had no natural width. Um, which is fine if you play the diamond and you have fullbacks that can bomb on. But as I've already mentioned, Reese Bennett is not a fullback by trade, so he wasn't doing it enough. David Tatonda, I think, started fairly shakily. So I think he was playing it safe and making sure that he was holding his defensive position. But gradually, credit to everyone, we grew into the game. And I think from probably the 25, 30 minute mark, we were much the better side and we created the better chances. Uh, there's a ball that gets recycled by Jack Tucker. And uh, Vidane Oliver's header loops over Josh Griffiths in the Lincoln goal and it's the bar. It comes down to Max Omar and for all the world, it looked like he was going to level it up. Does everything right, connects sweetly, keeps it down. It's blocked on the line. It's great defending. You can't argue with that. A few minutes later, um, there's another chance, isn't there? Ball gets played in again and, and Vidane Oliver is at the heart of the action once more. Left-footed half volley, which is cleared. I think it's a combination of the keeper's foot and maybe the defender behind him. And then he gets fouled after that, which leads to the goal. Carl Dempsey's shot, it's the wall, comes back out. Daniel Phillips tries to, I think, shoot. Doesn't catch it at all. It bounces into the turf and into a dangerous area. I think there's someone trying to win a flick on. There's bodies going everywhere for Dane Oliver. Danny Lloyd are both involved. From where we were, it looked like Danny Lloyd was just going to walk it into the net. Then the ball gets cleared into the Medway stand. Me and Bozza are aghast on the match day live at how we've not equalised. And then suddenly everyone starts celebrating. The referee looks like he's trying to give a free kick for Lincoln, but then notices that the linesman on the far side is flagging that the ball's gone over the line and suddenly we're level. Um, and I think it was deserved. Like I say, we started brightly for five minutes. We conceded. 
We then had to adjust. We took our time to get back into the game. We got a foothold and then we bossed it. And I think one all at the break was probably a fair reflection of how things had gone. Second half, I think, um, is fairly open. It's a bit end-to-end. -end. Uh, they've had a couple of chances, haven't they? I mean, David Totonda, who was very good second period, I'd like to add, makes an excellent block from Anthony Scully after the ball gets played far post. Scully's first touch is brilliant to get it onto his left foot. But David Totonda stands really big. Knows he's probably going to take one for the team, and he does. And he did it a little while later from a free kick, I think. Took it flush on the jaw from where we were stood. And he looked to be a little bit groggy and a little bit dazed for a couple of minutes because I laughed at Boz and said it reminded me of a few years ago when Lauren Robert absolutely poleaxed his Newcastle teammate, um, Olivier Bernard, didn't he? And, and knocked him out. And he went down like a heavyweight boxer. But yeah, fair play to Tatonda, who'd started a little bit slowly first period. He was much improved second half, as was Reese Bennett the other side. We then changed the system, didn't we? We went to um, a three in midfield behind the striker, which I think gave us more protection in full-back areas. And, and Bennett and Tatonda came to the four, and then they got braver and started to, to push the Lincoln full-backs back, which was great to see. At the other end, uh, Mustafa Karel, who has signed um, international clearance, was granted before the game. He came on and had a positive impact, a couple of snapshots, one that went just wide of the near post, another that was blocked, um, but he looks like he'd be a decent signing. Uh, Steve Evans, I know, has said he can play anywhere across the three behind the striker. So that's promising in terms of the fact that we're not going to have a huge squad and he can fill one or two roles. Um, Jack Tucker, there was a ball got played into a dangerous area. Just looked like he had to make any sort of contact and um, didn't, unfortunately. And the chance went. Um, but a big one was Vidane Oliver, wasn't it? It's was great football. I think Dempsey into Oliver Lee just before he got bought off. Flicks it in behind and Vidane Oliver's through one-on-one. -on -one. I think he just got caught in two minds. The ball was sort of not high enough to head it, not on the floor. So he tried to lob it over the keeper and didn't get enough on it. I think it hit him in the shin and uh, Griffiths made a save. Um, but I think if that chance comes to Vidane in a couple of weeks, he tucks it away. And we could easily have been sitting here talking about a 2-1 win for the Jules. But overall, I think based on what I saw, it was probably a fair result, the one-all draw. It's a solid point for both start, uh, both sides to start with. Jules, on the fact that they've had um, a truncated pre-season because we lost two weeks to COVID because of isolation rules. Lincoln, you have to remember, they lose three weeks of pre-season because they got to the playoff final, so they start later than everybody else. Um, but yeah, one-all draw was about right for me. In terms of a look at the opposition and their best player, I think you have to go to the the people that you know from last season were very good. Liam Bridcut in the middle runs the show, loves talking to the referee, bless him. Um, but yeah, he's very good if you give him time on the ball. He'll dictate play from the middle of the park. Um, Regan Paul was a decent at right back, I think. I think he was solid first period, um, but he probably had it an easier ride than than what he would have envisaged because we weren't you know, pressing high enough up the pitch. But for me, the best player for, for Lincoln City was Tao Eden. He was a threat from left back. I'm not sure many left backs wear the number seven shirt. And um, he was a threat all afternoon, wasn't he? And he scored the goal. Um, him and um, Connor Bramall in front of him linked up really well, especially for the opener. And yeah, he was just a threat all afternoon. He's a very good player at this level. So yeah, for me, best in Poncho was Tao Eden. Looking at the Jill's player ratings that myself and Boz came up with after the game, we went for Jamie Cummins, seven. Thought he was very decent, made a couple of saves. Uh, the big one in the lead-up to the opening goal. He had no chance with the second effort. I think he made one that you'd expect him to make second period. But he was very quiet second period. And, and that's credit to the Jills. And now we improved it and, and started to boss the game for large periods. Across the back four, gave Reese Bennett and David Totonda both full-backs a six. They both struggled badly first half. I think they're both big enough to admit that. But they were much improved second period as we look more solid. And they were ably helped out by the two centre-backs, who I thought were very, very good. Max Amar stepped back into the breach, first competitive game um, back at the club, and was very, very good. I think there was once he got done on the outside for a bit of pace, but aside from that, he won all his headers, he won all his battles. He brings the ball out of defence really well, which is great, and gives you an extra option into the middle of the park. And next to him, Jack Tucker, very, very good. He's been superb in pre-season, and he carried that form into yesterday's performance. Further forward, Daniel Phillips looks a real find. He's, um, he's certainly young and you can see that in the way he plays the game. But what I do like is as a youngster, he's not afraid to do the ugly stuff. He'll put his foot in, he'll do the dirty side of the game. 
Um, he got better and better as the game went on. We gave him a 6.5. That was probably a 6 in the first half and a 7 in the second half. A few people on Twitter said he should have been a bit higher. Got no problem with that. We all see it slightly different. Side of the diamonds, Cole Dempsey, a solid 7. Again, you know what you get with a skipper. He's very good. He works really hard. He gets about the park, uses the ball really well, does his defensive duty, and um, very, very rarely has a bad game. Stuart O'Keefe, the other side, looked a bit like fish out of water first half. Like I say, he was the wrong side of that diamond. But once we changed the system and he went to a double pivot in the middle, he got better and better. So similarly to Phillips, six first half, seven second half. So that gave him a six and a half overall. Oliver Lee, slightly disappointing for me yesterday. And Boz was very quiet. A couple of good moments, but just didn't see enough of the ball and didn't use it properly or as well as we know he can um, when he's at full tilt. So he's one to watch and to improve. Um, but a six... Nonetheless, for Oliver Lee, wasn't disaster by any means. The front two, as it was in the first half, for Dane Oliver and Danny Lloyd. We gave seven and a half for Deva uh, two of a Dane and a seven to Danny Lloyd. Both were very impressive in terms of their movement, their work rate, um, and trying to get in behind and cause uh, the Lincoln back four to be stretched. Um, the reason we gave for Dane Oliver seven and a half was because he scored the goal, we thought, and that we tend to give an extra half a point for goal scorers. Uh, but obviously the fact that it's now been given to Danny Lloyd, we'd probably be inclined to swap them over. So that would mean a seven for the Dane and a seven and a half for Danny Lloyd, which would have brought him into contention for man of the match. Uh, substitutes for the Jills, Ben Reeves and Mustafa Karayel got the final 20 minutes, gave them both a six and a half. Both had positive moments, but didn't really influence the game as much as Steve Evans might have liked. But certainly moving forward, I think they'll play plenty of minutes and be good for us. And uh, Gerald Sitole, Came on for the last 10 minutes or so. We've not given him a rating because we usually work on playing at least 15 minutes to qualify. Um, but was very bright. Put himself about. We were brave. Went 4-4-2 four, four, for the last few minutes of the game to try and win it. And um, he got him behind a couple of times. He pressed the fullback. And um, yeah, he looks like he could be one that, that might have a bit of an impact this season. Um, right. That is it in terms of match ratings. Final section of our new Monday review format is Jill's Man of the Match. And as you've just heard, Danny Lloyd getting a seven half, that brought him into contention. But our man of the match for the opening game of the season went to centre-back Jack Tucker. Like I've already mentioned, he was very good in pre-season. He was superb against Colchester and Millwall. Um, he didn't get a lot of minutes against Leighton Orient, so we didn't give him a rating. Norwich was a tough night for everyone, but you know he was still decent enough up against the Premier League side, but I thought he was absolutely immaculate yesterday afternoon, and so did Boz. Um, he's got two very good feet for a centre-back. Um, he gets about the part pretty well. Um, he's learning how to be a centre-half, isn't he, at this level? Because we have to remember he's still very young. He's becoming more dominant in the air. He's becoming more vocal. So, yeah, for us, man of the match went to Jack Tucker. Right, that is it for the first Monday review of the new campaign. Um, just want to say a big thank you to everyone before I finish up. Just been looking at the YouTube statistics over the last six videos, which is since pre-season really started in earnest. Uh, we've had 40 subscriber count gone up in the last 28 days. So cheers to everyone that subscribed to the channel. Uh, 3,725 views over the last half a dozen videos at 620 views per video, which is absolutely astounding. So thank you very much. We know it's much better now that we can get out to stadiums and me and Boz and Stocky can bring you match day live from games rather than a dining table. Um, so, yeah, just a big, big thank you. Please continue to check us out. Please continue to subscribe, even if you're not a Jules fan, because I will be looking for opposition fans to come on and do match previews. Uh, right, that is enough from me. I hope your Monday wasn't too stressful. Until next time, up the Jules. <laughs>